So clearly this abstraction resulted in a more elegant equation. And all I had to do was to introduce a pre-processing step where I computed the values of G0, P0, G1, P1, and so on. So all of these were pre-computed and that computation itself was very simple, right? G0 was nothing but an AND gate with inputs A0 and B0. P0 was nothing but an OR gate with inputs A0 and B0. And same thing for G1, P1, G2, and, and so on, right? I just needed my input values. And with a single gate traversal, I could compute all of these results. And by computing those results and feeding them as input to the next stage, that next stage became much simpler. It resulted in an equation that had no more than 33 terms. Okay, so clearly, you know, this kind of abstraction, this kind of decomposing a large equation into sub-equations results in something that is more efficient, right? So we are not trying to pursue the two-gate implementation that I was trying to pursue over here, right? In this case, I was trying to do everything with a sum of products. So I was saying that you just need to go through a bunch of AND gates in parallel, and then I'm going to go through one large OR gate. I was trying to do everything by going through exactly two gates. Now I'm trying to do everything by going through three gates. There's going to be a G slash P phase over here where I compute the values of each individual G and each individual P. These are then fed as inputs to the next stage. And this next stage is fairly simple, right? It requires a bunch of parallel AND gates where many of the AND gates are just dealing with, you know, two or three inputs. There are a few large AND gates that have 33 inputs. And then ultimately I'm going to have an OR gate which has... 33 inputs, right? So this is a step in the right direction where instead of going through two gate delays, I'm willing to go through three gate delays and the most complex gate has 33 inputs, right? And I believe that this is going to be a sweeter spot than the other extreme design where I was going through exactly two gate delays, but some gates had a really large number of inputs. Okay, and I'm doing this by decomposing my initial equation into simpler, smaller sub-equations. Now I can continue that process, right? I can also build something that goes through four sequential gate delays by decomposing the equations into even smaller terms. And that might result in even simpler gates, right? So maybe if I go through four, four gate delays, my largest gate may have no more than, say, 17 inputs, right? And so on, right? So essentially, I need to analyze each one of these cases. This one has fewer sequential gate delays, but each gate could be you know, rather slow because it has 33 inputs. In this case, I'm going through more gates sequentially, but each gate could be faster because a gate has fewer inputs, right? And so at some point, if you draw a curve, you may come up with a sweet spot, right? Saying that performance is optimized if I, for example, go through six gate delays where each gate has no more than, say, five inputs. Okay, so that's the rationale behind pursuing this generate propagate equations and creating what I'm going to describe as a carry look ahead adder. So now that I've explained the general philosophy, you know, let's take a step back and let's go back to actually implementing this adder function. Okay, so I've said that so I've said that efficient equations for the carry outs can be generated by introducing this this notion of generate and propagate. And so the carry coming out of the fourth bit would be something like this. Now, if I look at this particular term and, and study it, you'll see that what it means is that a carry is generated from this fourth bit if the quantities that I'm adding are large enough that I can generate a carry by myself, right? So if A3 and B3 are both, both one, then I don't care about what happened before me. I'm going to generate a carry no matter what. But if that's not true, but my propagate signal is true, then it means that I can pass on a carry, right? So if the bit before me generates a carry, and I'm in a state where I can propagate carry signals from previous stages, then again, I'm going to generate a carry. Or if I'm in a propagate state and the guy before me is in a propagate state and the guy before him is in a state where he can generate uh, a carry, then we're all going to collectively generate a carry too, right? And so on. So ultimately this one says that if the carry coming into the first bit is true, and all of us are in propagate state, then there's, there's going to be a carry generated out of the fourth bit. Okay, so a carry comes out of the fourth bit if any one of these guys is capable of generating and everything after that is capable of propagating that carry signal. What I'm also going to do 
is I'm going to say that you know this is a complex enough gate, right? This is kind of, this is getting complex enough that I don't want to now start writing an equation for C5, C6, and so on. So let's stop at C4. Let's view four bits at a time. And let's see if I can come up with an elegant way to express the carry coming out of this fourth stage. So let's look at what that expression is going to be. Okay, so I'm going to take four bits at a time. So this is dealing with, you know, bits A3, B3, all the way until A0, B0, and two more bits in between. And there could be a potential carry in coming in from an earlier stage. And there's a carry out being generated over here. What I want to do is generate this carry out result as efficiently and as quickly as possible. Okay, so I'm going to define a few new terms, right? So I already know what this carry out is going to be, right? This is the value of C4 from the previous slide, which was G3 plus G2 times P3 plus G1 times P2 times P1 plus G0 times P3, P2, P1 plus P3, P2, P1 carry in. Right, that is the term coming out of this guy over here. So now I'm going to decompose this carry coming out over here into a new kind of equation. I'm going to put all of these guys together and I'm going to put these guys together. And I think I got something wrong here. I think there's a P0 in as well. So you'll see that this carryout equation has a very similar form to the carryout that I had before, right? So if you recall, previously I'd said that a carry from any stage is A0, B0 plus A0 plus B0 times the carry in, right? So this equation over here and this equation over here have very similar forms, right? The input is the C in over here. That's being multiplied by a certain term. And then there is another large term over here, which is entirely local to me, right? This is only determined by the bits that I'm dealing with. In this case, it was A0 and B0. In this case, the bits that this four bit unit is dealing with are the values of the G's and the P's of those four bits. Okay, so that gives me an equation like this, which says that I'm nothing but G0 plus P0 times C in, right? And I note that I'm now using capital G and capital P. So small g and small p refer to the generates and propagates for individual bits. And capital G and capital P refer to whether a group of four bits is in the generate state and the propagate state, right? So what it's saying is that this collection of four bits is going to produce a carry if all of our generates and propagates are large enough that we can generate a carry of our own or if my propagate signals are all high enough that if a carry in comes into the least significant bit, I'm going to produce a carry out of the most significant bit. Okay, so the carry coming out of this four bit unit can also be expressed in this generate and propagate form where my bits are large enough, have a sufficiently large quantity that adding all of these up is going to produce a carry out of this most significant bit. Or my bits are large enough that if you give me a carry, I'm going to be able to propagate a carry on. Okay, so this is exactly the same form as before. Right? So just as we found this nice way of expressing one bit addition, and that led to a more efficient equation, now I found a way of expressing a four bit addition and, and the carries coming out of a four bit unit, and that's going to lead to even more efficient equations. Right? So I have a separate pre-processing step that computes the values of individual P's and G's. Then I have a next post-processing step which computes the values of capital P, capital G, and once I've done that, I can come up with these efficient equations to compute the carries of C1, C2, C3, and C4, where C1 is the carry coming out of bits 1 to 4. This is the carry coming out of bits 5 to 8, 9 to 12, and then 15 to 16. Okay, so if you look at the delays that it takes, this is going to be more efficient than a ripple carry adder, right? So in this case, there's one gate delay to compute the values of P and G, right? So I'm just redoing the math from earlier, right? So the inputs A and B show up. I go through one set of parallel gates to compute the values of P and G. I go through another set of um, AND gates followed by a set of OR gates. 
that's essentially me computing these values over here so now I have capital P and capital G then I go through another set of AND gates and another set of OR gates that's me doing this math over here and now as a result of that I have the value of C4 right which is the most significant bit so essentially I have gone through five sequential gate delays and no gate had more than five inputs right so no gate was more complicated than a five input gate and so I was able to do this with five sequential gates and that perhaps represents a sweet spot